Our planet Earth holds many secrets. Some are hidden in high mountains, others are buried deep under the ground, but the biggest secrets are in the ocean. The ocean is vast and very deep. Most of it is unexplored. We know more about the surface of the moon than we do about the bottom of our seas. This is a fascinating thought. It tells us there's so much more to discover right here on our own world. The ocean keeps its mysteries well guarded. Imagine a place so deep that sunlight has never touched it. This place exists. It's called the Mariana Trench. It's the deepest part of all the world's oceans. Think of it as a giant scar on the Earth's underwater skin. This trench is a world of its own. It is a place of crushing pressure and eternal darkness. For a long time, humans could only guess what was down there. It seemed impossible for anything to survive in such conditions. The Mariana Trench calls to us. It calls to scientists and explorers. It is a challenge. It is a mystery waiting to be solved. What creatures live there? How do they survive? What can this deep place teach us about our Earth? These questions drive us to explore. We want to pull back the curtain of water. We want to see what lies in this hidden part of our planet. The trench is more than just a deep hole. Exploring the Mariana Trench is like visiting another planet. The rules are different there. The environment is extreme, yet life finds a way. This is one of the ocean's most powerful lessons. The journey to the bottom is difficult, it is dangerous, but the rewards are great. We learn about life, we learn about our planet, we learn about ourselves. The trench is a reminder of the wild, untamed parts of our world that still exist. Where can we find this incredible deep place? The Mariana Trench is in the Western Pacific Ocean. It is east of the Mariana Islands. These islands give the trench its name. The trench is shaped like a crescent moon. It is about 2,550 kilometers long. That is a very long distance. It is much wider at the top than at its deepest point. This vast underwater canyon holds many secrets within its shadowy depths. The most famous part of the trench is called the Challenger Deep. This is its deepest point. How deep is it? It is almost 11,000 meters deep. That is nearly 11 kilometers straight down, or about 36,070 feet. To understand this depth, think about mountains. Mount Everest is the tallest mountain on land. It is about 8,848 meters high. If you could put Mount Everest into the Challenger Deep, its peak would still be covered by over two kilometers of water. This shows the immense scale of the trench. The pressure at the bottom of the Mariana Trench is enormous. It is over 1,000 times greater than the pressure at sea level. This is like having the weight of many large elephants pressing on every small part of your body. Imagine a strong metal container. The pressure at this depth could crush it easily. This extreme pressure is one of the biggest challenges for exploration. It is also a key reason why life there must be so specialized to survive such harsh conditions. This incredible depth was not discovered all at once. Early ships used long ropes with weights to measure the ocean floor. In, in 1875, the British ship HMS Challenger first recorded a very deep sounding near the Mariana Islands. This was the first hint of the trench's great depth. Later, more advanced methods like sonar confirmed just how deep it was. The Challenger Deep was named after this pioneering ship and later the HMS Challenger Second Survey Ship which pinpointed it more accurately in 1951. The deepest part of the ocean has a special name. It is called the Hadal Zone. This zone starts at a depth of about 6,000 meters. It goes all the way down to the bottom of the deepest trenches like the Mariana Trench. The name Hadal comes from Hades, the ancient Greek god of the underworld. This name fits well. It is a dark, cold, and mysterious place. Very few parts of our planet are as remote or as alien as the Hadal Zone. Life in the Hadal Zone faces many challenges. There is no sunlight at all. This means no plants can grow here. Photosynthesis, the process plants use to make food from sunlight, is impossible. The water is also very cold. It is just above freezing point, usually between 1 to 4 degrees Celsius. And as we know, the pressure is immense. It is hard to imagine how any living thing could exist under such extreme conditions. Yet, life has found a way to thrive. So how does anything live in this crushing darkness? The creatures here are highly adapted. They have special bodies and ways of living. Some creatures are very small. Microbes like bacteria and archaea are common. They form the base of the food web in many parts of the Hadal Zone. 
They do not need sunlight, instead some use chemicals from the Earth's crust to get energy. This process is called chemosynthesis. It is a different way of making life possible. The Haddle Zone is not a barren desert, it is a unique ecosystem. Scientists are still learning about it. Every expedition brings new discoveries. The creatures here are often strange and wonderful. They have evolved over millions of years. They are perfectly suited to their extreme home. Studying them helps us understand the limits of life. It shows us how adaptable life can be. The Hadal Zone is a frontier of biological discovery. It pushes the boundaries of what we thought was possible for life on Earth. The Mariana Trench is home to some very unusual animals. One of these is the Mariana snailfish. It is a small, pale fish. It looks a bit like a tadpole. These snailfish are amazing survivors. They have been found swimming at depths of over 8,000 meters. This makes them one of the deepest living fish ever discovered. Their bodies are soft and gelatinous. This helps them cope with the extreme pressure. They do not have scales like many other fish. Another common creature in the trench is the amphipod. Amphipods are small crustaceans. They look a bit like tiny shrimp. Some types of amphipods in the Mariana Trench can grow surprisingly large. These are sometimes called supergiant amphipods. They are scavengers. This means they eat dead animals or other organic matter that sinks down from the upper layers of the ocean. They play an important role in the trench's food web, cleaning up the seabed. Then there are the xenophyophores. These are fascinating organisms. They are giant, single-celled creatures. Yes, just one cell, but they can grow to be several centimeters across. They look like flat, lumpy sponges or strange blobs. Xenophyophores live on the seafloor. They feed by absorbing nutrients from the surrounding water and sediment. They are very delicate. Their bodies are made of a collection of tiny tubes. They are a unique form of life found in the deepest parts of the world's oceans. These are just a few examples. Scientists are constantly discovering new species in the Mariana Trench. Each creature has special features that allow it to live there. Some have bodies with very little empty space. This helps them resist the crushing pressure. Others have slow metabolisms. This means they use very little energy. This is helpful in a place where food can be scarce. The life in the trench is a testament to nature's ability to adapt to even the harshest environments on our planet. Section 5. More denizens of the dark adapting to extremes. Beyond the more well-known snailfish and amphipods, other life forms persist. Foraminifera are tiny, single-celled organisms, often with shells. These shells, or tests, can be made of calcium carbonate or agglutinated particles. In the extreme depths of the Mariana Trench, many foraminifera have organic or soft agglutinated tests. This is because calcium carbonate dissolves under such immense pressure and in the cold, acidic water. They are incredibly abundant on the seafloor, forming a significant part of the deep-sea sediment and contributing to the ecosystem. Coat pods, small crustaceans related to shrimp and crabs, are also found in these abyssal depths. While many copepods live in the sunlit upper ocean, some species have adapted to the Hadal Zone. They are often part of the zooplankton community, even at these great depths, feeding on bacteria or detritus. Their ability to survive the pressure and find food in the dark is remarkable. They are a crucial link in the food chain, transferring energy from microscopic life to larger organisms, if any are present to prey on them in such challenging conditions. Chemosynthesis is a vital process for life in parts of the trench, especially near hydrothermal vents if they exist there or where methane seeps occur. While large hydrothermal vent fields common in other deep sea areas are not as prominently documented in the Challenger Deep itself, the principles of chemosynthesis support microbial life. These microbes use chemical energy from substances like hydrogen sulfide or methane which seep from the Earth's crust. This forms the base of a food web independent of sunlight, supporting unique communities of organisms that cluster around these chemical oases in the deep. The overall food web in the Mariana Trench is quite different from shallow water ecosystems. It relies heavily on marine snow. This is a constant shower of organic material falling from the upper layers of the ocean. It includes dead plankton, fecal pellets and other debris. This is the primary source of food for many trench dwellers, especially the scavengers. The amount of marine snow reaching the deepest parts is small, so life there must be efficient at finding and using these scarce resources. Life is sparse, but it is definitely present, 
tenacious and uniquely adapted. Section 6, Touching the Bottom, Pioneering Expeditions. The quest to reach the Mariana Trench's deepest point began long ago. For many years, its true depth was a subject of speculation. The first ship to get a reliable depth sounding was the British survey ship HMS Challenger during its global expedition from 1872 to 1876. Using a weighted rope, they recorded a depth of over 8,000 meters. This was an astonishing discovery at the time. It hinted at a world far deeper than anyone had previously imagined, sparking scientific curiosity about these profound abysses. The first humans to actually reach the bottom of the Challenger Deep made history in 1960. Jacques Picard, a Swiss oceanographer, and Don Walsh, a US Navy lieutenant, descended in a special submersible called the Bathyscaphe Trieste. Their journey down took nearly five hours. The pressure outside was immense. They spent only about 20 minutes on the sea floor. They saw a flatfish and some shrimp, proving that life could exist even at such extreme depths and pressures. This was a monumental achievement in ocean exploration. After the Trieste dive, there was a long gap in manned exploration of the Challenger Deep. The technical challenges were enormous. For decades, exploration was mainly done by uncrewed robotic vehicles. Then in 2012, filmmaker and explorer James Cameron made a solo dive. He piloted his own specially designed submersible, the Deep Sea Challenger. He spent several hours on the bottom. He collected samples and filmed the alien landscape. His dive brought renewed public attention to the mysteries of the trench. These early expeditions were incredibly brave. The technology was new, the dangers were very real. The explorers faced the unknown. They pushed the limits of what was thought possible. Their journeys paved the way for future research. They showed that humans and their machines could visit the most remote and hostile environments on our planet. Each successful descent was a victory for science and engineering opening a tiny window into this hidden world. These pioneers expanded our understanding of the Earth's final frontier. Section 7 Modern Voyagers Technology for the Deep Today, exploring the Mariana Trench relies on amazing technology. Manned submersibles are still used, but they are very complex and expensive. More common are remotely operated vehicles, or ROVs. These are like underwater robots. They are connected to a ship on the surface by a long cable. This cable provides power and sends signals. Scientists on the ship can control the ROV. They can see what the ROV sees through cameras. ROVs have arms to collect samples of rocks, water and marine life. Another important tool is the Autonomous Underwater Vehicle, or AUV. Unlike ROVs, AUVs are not connected by a cable. They are pre-programmed with a mission. They swim independently through the water. They use sensors to map the seafloor. They can collect data on water temperature, salinity, and chemicals. When their mission is complete, they return to the surface. AUVs can cover large areas of the ocean floor. They are very useful for surveying unexplored regions of the trench. Landers are another type of technology used in the deep sea. These are platforms that are dropped to the seafloor. They are not mobile like ROVs or AUVs. Instead, they stay in one place for a long time. Landers can carry cameras, lights, and scientific instruments. They can also have bait to attract deep sea creatures. After a set period, often days or months, the lander releases weights and floats back to the surface. This allows scientists to study processes over time in one location. Building vehicles and equipment for the Mariana Trench is a huge challenge. The materials must withstand incredible pressure. Titanium alloys are often used for the hulls of submersibles because they are strong and light. Syntactic foam, a special buoyant material, is used to help vehicles float. Electronics must be protected in pressure-resistant housings. Lights are needed to see in the total darkness. All this technology allows us to explore a place that was once completely out of reach, bringing back valuable information from Earth's deepest realm. Section 8. Why journey to the deepest dark, the quest for knowledge? Why do we spend so much effort exploring the Mariana Trench? One big reason is to understand our planet better. The trench is a subduction zone. This is where one of the Earth's tectonic plates is sliding beneath another. Studying these zones helps us understand earthquakes and tsunamis. The geology of the trench can tell us about the processes that shape our planet's surface. It provides clues about the Earth's history and how continents and oceans have formed over millions of years. 
The trench is also a unique place to study biology. The creatures living there are extremophiles. This means they thrive in extreme conditions. Studying them can teach us about the limits of life. It can give us insights into how life might exist on other planets with harsh environments. Scientists are also interested in the biochemistry of these organisms. They might produce unique chemicals that could be useful for new medicines or industrial applications. The deep sea is a largely untapped resource for biological discovery. Exploring the Mariana Trench helps us understand Earth's complex systems. The deep ocean plays a role in regulating our climate. It absorbs heat and carbon dioxide from the atmosphere. Deep ocean currents move water around the globe. By studying the trench, we learn more about these global processes. This knowledge is important for understanding climate change and its impacts. The deep sea is connected to the rest of the planet in ways we are still discovering. Finally, exploration is driven by human curiosity. We want to know what is out there. The Mariana Trench is one of the last unexplored frontiers on Earth. Each expedition has the potential for new discoveries. We might find new species, new geological features, or new scientific phenomena. This quest for knowledge expands our understanding of the universe. It inspires us to ask new questions and seek new answers. The trench reminds us that there is always more to learn about our amazing world. Section 9, the trench is tomorrow, mysteries and responsibilities. Despite all our efforts, the Mariana Trench remains largely a mystery. It is vast and incredibly deep. We have only explored tiny parts of it. Imagine trying to understand an entire continent by visiting just a few small spots. That is the scale of the challenge. Many questions are still unanswered. What other strange creatures live in its depths? How do these ecosystems function in such extreme conditions? Are there unique geological features we have not yet seen? The potential for discovery is immense. Future missions will continue to chip away at these unknowns. Technology will keep improving. New submersibles, ROVs and AUVs will allow for longer and more detailed explorations. Scientists will develop new sensors and sampling techniques. International collaboration will be important. Exploring such a challenging environment requires a lot of resources and expertise. By working together, nations can achieve more than they could alone. The future of trench exploration is exciting, promising many more revelations. However, as we explore, we must also be mindful of conservation. Even the deepest parts of the ocean are not immune to human impact. Microplastics have been found in the guts of creatures living in the Mariana Trench. This is a shocking reminder of how far our pollution can reach. There is also growing interest in deep sea mining for minerals. We must ensure that any activities in these fragile environments are carefully managed to prevent damage to unique ecosystems that we are only just beginning to understand. The Mariana Trench is a special place. It represents the deepest, darkest and most unknown part of our planet. It challenges our technology and our understanding of life. It reminds us of the power and mystery of the natural world. As we continue to explore its secrets, we have a responsibility to protect it. The trench is a shared heritage of humanity. It holds lessons for us all about the resilience of life, the workings of our planet, and the importance of treading lightly on even its most remote corners.